Bashamava, Wavra, Wurhat Kutcha. Tribukta la Laka Bamrame, Wa la Rashlama, Wasavratava, Lavnai Nasha. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Hello and welcome. Very recently, there has been quite the uproar with regards to the nonsensical idea that the Quran has been perfectly preserved not even a variance in one letter or word. Academics have known that the Qur'an has not been perfectly preserved for quite a while. They know this in part because Muslim sources tell us that the Qur'an has not been perfectly preserved. The notion that the Qur'an has been perfectly preserved is only a modern lie invented by Muslims within the last hundred years or so. Historically, Muslims have always known that the Qur'an has never had a single standardized text. You don't have to believe Western scholarship. This is what the Muslim sources themselves say. It may be shocking to a lot of Muslims to learn that they have been lied to about the Qur'an being perfectly preserved. So shocking that it will make many question their Iman. Hence, all the uproar in the Muslim community. However, even for those who are aware of the so-called Ahruf in Qira'at, Yasser Qadi is completely correct when he said during an interview with Muhammad Hijab, an interview that incidentally Yasser Qadi and Muhammad Hijab have both removed from their YouTube channels, that the standard Muslim narrative has holes in it. Yasser Qadi is clear that simply invoking the Ahruf and Qira'at to explain variances in the Qur'an is not enough to explain the holes in the narrative. Rather, the holes in the narrative are specifically tied to the Akhruf and Qira'at. Now, the issue is not one of just mere pronunciation that Muslims would like you to believe. For example, in Ibn Kathir al-Maki's recitation, one says, Sirat al-Mustaqim with a seen instead of sirat al-mustaqim, with a sod. Or in English, where one would say don't instead of do not. Issues like these are not the holes in the narrative. This is a diversionary tactic used by Muslims to lie in order to make those unfamiliar with the subject think that that's all it amounts to. Many people may be wondering, what are the holes that Yasser Qadi talks about, but never explicitly mentions? Certainly, if the issue was that straightforward to say seen instead of sod, he would have just explained that. Far from it. The issue is much more delicate than that. In this video, I ask 10 devastating questions that point to the holes in the Muslim narrative. These questions cannot be answered by the existing explanations given by the standard Muslim narrative. The last question that I ask, that alone is enough to destroy the entire narrative. As we start digging deeper into the textual criticism of the Quran, one cannot help but wonder that the Ahruf and Qira'at were invented as a means to explain why Muslims have so many different Qur'ans, even after the supposed standardization by Uthman. Let's begin. We start by looking at the 1924 Cairo edition of the Qur'an. So question one. How do you explain the following observations with regards to the 1924 Cairo edition of the Qur'an. In other words, the Hafs text that Muslims worldwide believe is the only Qur'an ever revealed. Some corrections to earlier manuscripts bring them in line with this edition. Other places in the same manuscripts were not corrected to match this edition. While in other places, corrections were made that diverged from this edition. 
if you attribute corrections to manuscripts to mean fixing scribal errors, then it does not make sense why the same manuscript would explicitly make changes at the same time that deviate from the 1924 edition and also not correct other so-called scribal errors. Moreover, if the 1924 Cairo edition of the Qur'an was meant only to standardize high school examinations, then there is no rational explanation why there would be a need to destroy all other Qur'an variants. Just simply state that the Hafs text is the one that will be used in the school system. Simple as that. Just like any textbook, that is the one that will be taught and disseminated to students. There is no need to destroy Qur'ans with different qira'at. Question 2. What is the oldest complete Qur'an manuscript that matches the Cairo 1924 edition? Whatever it may be, it certainly isn't from the time of Muhammad. Either way, it is a relevant question to ask in ascertaining why exactly the Hafs text was chosen. So far, the oldest manuscript evidence we have for the Qur'an, the so-called Birmingham manuscript, only preserves parts of Surah 18. It is by no means anywhere close to a complete manuscript. Likewise, the Sana'a manuscript only contains three chapters. The oldest, most complete manuscript is the 8th century Tupkapa manuscript, which does not match the Cairo 1924 edition. If I'm not mistaken, they differ in 2,270 instances. Question 3. Why does the Topkapi manuscript exhibit several different qira'at? Perhaps the different qira'at merged into this one manuscript? Or the different qira'at emerged out of such manuscripts? Muslims are faced with a terrible dilemma. If they point to the Topkapi manuscript as early evidence for the Qur'an's textual preservation, then they destroy the whole entire narrative of the Qira'at. Question 4. Why would Uthman need to standardize the text if Muhammad had a scribe, Zayd bin Thabit, that was writing down the Qur'an during his lifetime? There is not a single complete manuscript dating to the time of Muhammad. Yet we have attestation that the Qur'an was written down during Muhammad's lifetime. The Birmingham fragments are dated to within the time that Muhammad was alive. So Muslims should have complete manuscripts of the entire Qur'an from that time. The oldest, most complete manuscript of the Qur'an the Tukapa manuscript, is roughly a century after Muhammad's lifetime. Question 5. If missing verses and chapters from today's Qur'an are explained away as the result of abrogation, and hence they do not need to be part of the Qur'an, then why do you still find abrogated verses in today's version of the Qur'an. Question 6. Why are none of the Qur'anic manuscripts that we have identified as those of Uthman standardizations? Question 7. If Uthman standardized the Qur'an in the Qurayshi dialect, then why is the Hafs text 
of today's Quran not in the Qurayshi dialect? Even going so far as containing words of Syriac origin, which isn't even an Arabic dialect. Question 8. Did all the Akhruf have several Qira'at, just as how the current recension of the Qur'an has several Qira'at? The Qira'at were standardized in the 10th century, according to the Ijtihad of Abu Bakr ibn Mujahid. Muhammad lived in the 7th century. Pause for a moment and reflect on that. It was three centuries after Muhammad that someone using their own ijtihad instituted what was to be considered the canonical qira'at. There is no evidence that these particular qira'at can be traced to Muhammad. Remember, ahadith and sira literature didn't start appearing until one to two centuries after Muhammad, so it cannot be used to validate what happened during Muhammad's time. Even if you were to allow for the fact that Muhammad himself said there were several qira'at, there is no evidence what all those qira'at are. You are relying on someone's own ijtihad three centuries after the fact. Question 9. How is the Qur'an perfectly preserved if Uthman destroyed other ahruf that were supposedly revealed by Allah? If the Qur'an was revealed in seven ahruf and we no longer have all seven ahruf, that means that Allah has not preserved the Qur'an. This is another massive dilemma for Muslims. If you believe that Uthman burned all copies of the Qur'an except one, then you are admitting that the Qur'an is not preserved. Perhaps one ahruf was preserved, or harf, but now you no longer have all other ahruf. What Uthman's standardization did was to destroy something that was supposedly revealed from Allah. So Uthman punished people for reciting what was legitimately revealed by Allah. Think about that. And now, come to the final question, the million-dollar question, that the standard Muslim narrative absolutely cannot answer. If the Qira'at are an orally preserved tradition, then why do you see differences that can only be explained through rasm, namely, variant readings strictly based on textual differences. This suggests that the Qira'at do not predate the manuscripts, but in fact come from the manuscripts. As the textual criticism of the Qur'an continues, the only plausible explanation for the various akhruf and qira'at seems to be an invention in order to explain why there are so many different versions of the Qur'an. Perfectly preserved Qur'an? Nah. Muslims, your scholars and imams lie to you. So the Caliph Uthman 
standardize the copies of the Quran and therefore from his time up until our time there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word and this is because of the far-sightedness of the Caliph Uthman. Uh, some of our brothers who live in Algeria or Morocco or other North African countries they recite the Quran in a slightly different way not just a voice or not just a, 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 a speaking style but also changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat and all Muslims don't apologize for the truth and don't distort the truth there are, there are Muslims that try to deny this oh he didn't marry Aisha as a young girl yeah look that's not the way forward we don't lie for the sake of our religion astaghfirullah we have the truth we're not going to cover up the truth if people are, find it embarrassing this is the reality deal with it Shlama Amkulhun Aileen, Devam Sheikh Anun Amin. Peace be with you all who are in Christ. Amen.